A Fork in the Road with Chef Garrett is brought to you by... Visit historic Oak Ridge and discover America's secret city. Explore the great outdoors, experience majestic lakes, relive history, and treat yourself to an inspired meal. Historic Oak Ridge. For more information, oakridgevisitor.com. You can't get this at home. This week on A Fork in the Road with Chef Garrett, we're going to visit the culinary secrets of the secret city. Oak Ridge. We're on Jackson Square. We're going to visit Dean's Restaurant and Bakery, Razzleberries, and the Soup Kitchen. Don't miss it. We're here in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. They call this the secret city. Well, I'm going to let a secret out of the bag today. We're on Jackson Square, and Jackson Square has a lot of terrific food. We're at Dean's Restaurant and Bakery. Chef Dean Russell is inside. He's doing a fantastic job here. We're gonna go inside and meet him. Come on. Dean, how are you? Chef. Good, good to, to see, see you. you. Good How to see are you? you? Doing good. Heard Welcome so many great things about this place. So Thanks. many great things. I'm excited to meet you. I'm excited for you to show me. You got a new brisket on the menu, yes? We do. It's fabulous. It's fabulous. Smoked for 10 hours, held for another eight hours. So it's like an 18 hour process. Falling They're apart. Great. They're great. Got to see it. They're great. Let's, Let's go. Show me. Let's go. Well, you're familiar with brisket, I know. Familiar with brisket. They're great. And I really wasn't familiar with them until just recently. Really? And so I just started kind of taking them up. They're easy to screw up, but they're great if you do them right yeah. and keep it simple. Long and slow. Long and slow. They're fabulous. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna salt him up and pepper him up. Sure. Uh, again, we're gonna keep it simple. Now I noticed this is this is a whole brisket, so you've got the, the deckle and the flat muscle. We do it. have the deckle and the flat, and a lot of people may not be familiar with what the deckle and the flat is. The flat, is down here and the deckle is across the top and right. the deckle is the fat. It's it's great, best it's the best, best part. part. It's absolutely. absolutely the best part. So we're gonna do is slip him in our smoker. So right. we've just salt and peppered him. We're gonna smoke him, let the smoke do the work. So talk to me about what sort of wood have I got in the smoker? We've got hickory. Beautiful. So, and we're using chips in this smoker. Anybody that's got a smoker, um, hickory, oak, we're using local woods. Sure. So that's what we, that's what we did. Let's go. Let's go. So in he goes, set our temperature, 10 hours. Right. We're ready to go. So Dean, every great brisket has a great barbecue sauce to go with it. This is your own version this right This is here. it right It's the here. house version. It, it is, and it's fabulous. Uh, it's really good. You can tweak it a lot of different ways by using a little bit different vinegar. I'm using apple cider vinegar. Yeah, and smell um, it. And so I've got about three and a half cups of that, and then I've got uh, about three cups of ketchup. Ketchup, sure. So that's going in. Of course, we all know that that's a good base for a barbecue sauce. Absolutely. Then a little bit of brown sugar. Sure. About a cup. And again, this is something that you can sweeten up as much as you want to. Sure. Some uh, people add a little molasses like a little or bit honey more. or whatever. Sure. Yeah. It's great. Uh, granulated garlic. We like using that. Sure. A granulated onion. Yep. Uh, smoked paprika. It's great spice. Yeah. Smoked paprika pepper. So Beautiful. that's going in there, um, celery seed. Gotta have that in there, yeah. you can't do without that. And then black pepper. Beautiful. Salt. Yep. Some Worcestershire sauce. Of course. We're gonna control the heat with a little bit of crushed red pepper, so sure. that's great. gonna be great. And then I like to squeeze a lemon in mine. Yeah, a little citrus, a little acid. Yeah, so the whole lemon is great. Well, there's a half of one. So and my favorite part of this sauce is that this is a no-cook barbecue sauce. So yeah. this, once you mix these ingredients, you're ready to start basting. You're ready to sauce. go with it. Ready to go. Baste it. I love it. Uh, you know, throw it on the plate, yeah. whatever. It's ready, and it's good. So we're just going to mix it for a little bit. So one thing I'll say about this is you can certainly thicken it if you want. Yeah. But you can smell it. It smells so oh, yeah. great. It's awesome. It's awesome it's sauce. Terrific. I don't like mine really thick. All right, let's see what we got. Mm. 
Nice. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Okay. Yeah, and you can smell the acid and the sugar. Yeah, it smells great. It's great. It's going to go. All great. those it's herbs and stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, sit a day. Everything blends together really well. It's really ready to go now, but it's even a little bit more potent. It as day. it sits a wee while, yeah. yeah. All the flavors marry and develop a wee bit, yeah. of course, yeah. So now we have our brisket in there. It's been in now for the 10 hours. Yeah, plus a little bit. So here it is. Oh yeah, that's gorgeous. The bark is beautiful on these things. Oh, look at that. Look at the color on that thing. And that is all, there's nothing on this except salt and pepper. So that glorious color, that's all smoke. It's all it's smoke. all smoke. And it's caramelized the outside of that. That looks and smells incredible right there. It's, they're, they're wow. really good. Wow. And I will say, smell. and simple. Mm. Keep it simple. Yeah, so keep it simple. There let's take go. a look and see what we got. Yeah, mm. let's do that. Oh, look at it. Like butter. Look at that thing. The knife is just gliding through that thing. Yeah. Let's try it. Wow, do I ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's you better try. believe I do. Let's Let's try it without the sauce first and see yeah. what you think, and then we'll try it with the sauce. All right, let's try this. Oh. Now, I will say that the flat is awesome for what it is, but if you really want to try something, we've got to get in the deckle. Let's do that. We know that. Mm. So That's glorious, but I'm looking forward to this. Okay. So people talk about the crunchy ends of these things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that they like the crunch. I think what they really like is the fat that it's loaded up with fat. Well, you can see, as the knife is gliding through this, you can see that it's just so incredibly moist. And what happens is that, although you start out loaded with fat, 10 plus hours in that smoker at a low temperature, most of that fat is melting and running through the meat. Yeah, and it just makes for a great flavor, oh, of course. Yeah. And very, very tender. And very, very tender. Very tender. So, let's try this piece right here. Yeah, let's try it. Let me have, cut me a wee bit off there. Let's try this one right yeah. here. There you go, try that. I'm up. This is the best bit right here. Saw that outside bark and all. Even the fragrance, just incredible. What do you think? Mm. All right. That's it right there. Should we mm. get a little sauce? Let's do it. Well, anyway, let's just take a little sauce. And that's going to be your brisket. Oh, that's just beautiful. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Look at that with the sauce. I mean, look at that, it's just pulling apart with a fork. I don't even need the knife. What do you think? Oh, that is just, you know, just the right amount of heat and sweet. And it cuts right through that, the lushness of the barbecue and the smoke. Absolutely terrific job. Look how tender that is. I think they're pretty awesome. And you know, it's not so much what we do to it, it's just keeping it simple, but the, the beef mm. itself is pretty awesome. Well, there you go. You know, I tell you all the time, I'm always looking for talented young chefs who have great classical chops and are still able to put their own spin on something. Well, here's a Knoxville bread chef who really knows his stuff and is serving up fantastic Southern cuisine right here in Oak Ridge. Chef Dean really knows his stuff. My hat is off to him, great job. Well, onward. I'm on Jackson Square in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. And I'm going inside to meet my good friend Valdek, who owns Razzleberries. Interesting guy, interesting place. You're going to love him. Come on. Valdek, how are you? Hey, nice to see you. How you doing, buddy? Come on here. You got sure. something for me? I got something for you. I'm coming. Good to see you. Nice to see you. German, I'm thinking. Of course. Of course. I tried to All get right. you uh, a plate with uh, some sausages, some cheese. And great bologna, German bologna. You gotta Brilliant. try this. Ooh. Oh, okay, great. So, uh, what do we have here? Uh, this is we, your this is your kielbasa. That's yeah. my homemade kielbasa. That's oh. another one, smoked sausage, like more for snacking, called cabanos. Mm. Okay, it's a uh, salami, dry salami, very German salami, mm. and uh, cheese. And you gotta try this. Oh yeah, it's now see the difference in color. See how pale it is compared to what you see in the grocery store. And you gotta taste it. I will. There's the real German bologna. Mm -hmm. And uh, got real flavor. Full flavor, not salty. It's delicious. That's really good. Full Great flavor. texture. Love that oh, texture. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. So this is the real McCoy. Mm. It's a real, a real deal. Well, of course, the thing here, Valdek, is that you've got all of this, 
all the things you have in this shop are so unique. They're not things you're gonna find anywhere else. That's the whole idea. The whole idea of opening this business was to do something unique, different. I don't wanna repeat other businesses. That's not my goal. I wanna create something different. That's yeah. where people will come. Let's go to Razzleberry because they have different stuff. Well, you created your own niche is what you've done. And of course, you have a really good, you've got so many Europeans working out at the uh, I think, that, yeah, that's my benefit. We have the international community, Oak Ridge. You have so many foreigners working at the, at the lab or Y12. So they and, get a little slice of home. And they feel they like home, home. yeah. Mm -hmm. They're coming here, wow, I have this. Oh, this is like home. I feel like my, my uh, daily in, in Germany or, or France or, or Sweden, people from all over the world. Good on you. Everything is fantastic. Looks really good. And now you're going to take me to the kitchen too? Of course, I can yeah? go to it. Of right. course, come that. I got a few different things too. So, Baldek, you made me very nervous when you told me you wanted to bring me back here to give me some tongue. So, uh... I tell you we're very nervous. I'm going to bring you here to taste different beer. This is from Slovakia right now. Slovakia? Yes, sir. Beside Poland? Yes, south of Poland. Mm. How smooth. Beautiful beer. Fantastic lager. Really nice. Let's go back to the tongue. Yes, I do have tongue. It's mm. something very unique, specialty. Yeah. And I have a lot of customers, special request for that. You can't have a real European deli without tongue. Of course, you gotta have tongue. You gotta have nice tongue with horseradish, mashed potato, or just tongue sandwich. Smoked tongue, or just sure. a plain boiled tongue. So what do you got here for me? I got some nice tongue for you. Okay, you're gonna show me. Of course. You ready for taste? It's a tongue. All right, come on, I'll slip me some of tongue. Of course. <laughs> I'll slip your tongue. Mm, look how beautiful this is. Wow, look at that. That's really a piece of art. So how long did you poach that for? Uh, this I start this morning around 8 o'clock. I cook it, I shut, and the, this thing's sitting. I shut the uh, flame around 2 o'clock and just sitting in the brine. Okay, and of course you need horseradish with that. Yeah. And of course you need a little fork or something. A little fork. And that's and the you classic. Know what? I'm not gonna let you eat alone. I'm gonna join you because yeah, you I it. love this. Yeah. And that's the classic deal right there. A wee bit of horseradish. Yes. A little mashed potatoes or mashed something. Mashed potato mm -hmm. and horseradish sauce. I mean, this is you can be. Let's do it. Little dip, little mm. dunk, away we go. Mm. And beer. Cilantro, my friend. How tender, full of flavor, how nice. Tons of flavor. Mm. It's great, and it's beautiful cold. In a cold cut, slice it down in a sandwich, it's beautiful. You can eat, do, you can smoke it now. We're just gonna get a little smoke flavor. Yeah. And a little horseradish and a nice it's rye really bread. Good. It's fantastic. Well, that was my good friend Valdek. And as you can see, I'm out as Pigmobile here, which is really very appropriate because Valdek is actually the only guy I know who might be a bigger ham than I am. He's quite a character. He's got a heck of a place. Razzleberry's right here in Oak Ridge. Great place. I'm going to come back and visit him. I hope you do too. Onward. Well, how appropriate that my last stop here in the Secret City is the worst kept secret of all. This is the soup kitchen. Been here 33 years, going strong. Let's find out why. Gail, how are you? Good, how are you doing, Garrett? Nice to see you. Nice to see you, it's a pleasure. The aroma of soup is absolutely stunning, beautiful. So show me what you have there. Okay, this is our chicken noodle. We have chicken noodle every wow. day and we sell out every day. Popular soup. Very popular. What else you got? We have some hearty vegetables, strictly vegetarian. Wow. Nice big lumps of vegetable in nice there. Nice big lumps of vegetables. And our famous chili. Ah, yeah. Now, that, I've heard a lot about the chili. I'm going to be trying that in a Okay, while. good. So with all these soups, how many soups do you do a day? Uh, we do eight to ten different soups every wow. day. A lot of soup. 
Very, a lot of soup, a lot of soup. And you don't just do that. So this is a busy kitchen because you bake here, I know that. We do, we make all our cakes, pies from scratch. And breads. And breads. I'm looking at some of your, these are house-made breads? Yes. All your signature recipes made right here. It's your brown bread? It's our brown bread. It has oats, bran, and molasses. Lovely. Cornbread. Corn Cornbread. Corn that looks bread. really That's good. That's very good. It has no flour. Wow. Okay. And this one is Mexican, Mexican cornbread. Mexican, a little spicy. Yes. And this is our cheese bread. The cheese bread. Might be uh, getting into a little of that later, too. That's very, very good. Very good. So where do all these soups get made? All these soups get made in-house, right here in our kitchen. Okay. And kettles. We... Right, right over here? Yes. You want to show me the kettles? I'll be happy to. Let's go. Come on. Ah, these are the kettles. These are the kettles. These are our kettles. Okay, now I can tell from looking, these are 10 gal, uh, ten gallons. 10 gallons. Yeah, 10 gallons. 10 gallons each. So with all these soups you do, let me make a guess here. You start early in the morning, you got a different soup in each of these. We do. And then when that's tipped out, clean them out, start again, new recipe. We do all day. We do that all day. And where do, with all these soups you make, how do, you, how does the, how do they remember them? Well, we have all our recipe cards laminated. Okay. And we have, like I say, we have 185 different recipes. And the reason we do this is for our franchises, everything has to be consistent. 185 flavors of soup. What, is, what are some of the most unusual flavors? Well, uh, we have Georgia peanut. We make Georgia peanut. That's an we unusual make, flavor. Very unusual. We make a mulligatawny, which is apples, chicken, curry. Yep. It's a very good soup. Yeah, it's an Indian soup. Very good, yes. Yeah. It's, it's a big seller. We, we have a lot of unique really? soups. Very unique. Absolutely amazing. Well, I think there's nothing for it but for me to try some of these soups, okay. do you think? Okay, okay. All right. Let's well, have some lunch. Let's do that. Okay. All right, All right. come on. Okay. Let's do it. So, Bob, I'm about to try some of your extraordinary soups here. And while I do that, I want you to talk a little bit about 33 years. Yeah. Obviously a huge success story. But you're not a restaurant man at all up until you open this place. No, I'm not. You just decided one day I'm going to open a restaurant and I'm going to specialize in soup. Well, it's a little more than that. I had a son who had some experience. And he was sort of... Uh, at loose ends, you might say. <laughs> looking for a way to spend your money, I yeah. got you. <laughs> and I relied upon him a lot to get, get things off the ground. So he had the know-how. Yeah, he sure did. And mm. uh, I remember the first time we bought 50 pounds of potatoes. And my wife was trying to figure out what we were going to do with the leftovers. <laughs> uh, and you found out we didn't, we didn't have any <laughs> You didn't have any. Well, the, the vegetable soup is extraordinary. Really, really good. It's got a real rich tomato. Uh, center to it. Very, yeah. very nice. And I know that's one of our biggest sellers. This one is. is the chicken and, noodle. Oh, my mother-in-law cannot do without chicken noodle. Mm. I mean, I, if she oh, can't make really it good. here, I've got to carry it home to her. But she loves it. It's really good. That's, that reminds me when I was a little kid. When I was sick or something, they'd give me that great chicken noodle oh, it soup. Makes you, it's got to make you feel better. It's it does. To. I feel better already. <laughs> now, this one is interesting. This yeah. is very like a gumbo. And what do we call this one? Louisiana rice. It's, Louisiana uh, rice, yeah. and it's chock full of uh, smoked so, sausage. Yes, it is. Uh, we don't skimp on the things that really count when you're making a good soup. Wow, this one's really, really Have good. Have at it. Mm. <laughs> That's right up my alley. All right. Well, we'll, we'll set you up with a mm. large container to take home with you. And this one, I say, <laughs> now this is your biggie. This is the... The, the this original. is your signature. This, this is, is your original. chili. Yeah. Okay. We started out making these things in a crock pot. Really? We had four crock pots lined up, <laughs> and you know we emptied them and then we filled <laughs> and them start again. Start again. And, yeah. We, well, we found another way to do it. Fortunately. Are that, these pinto beans I'm seeing? I uh, uh, no, they're not. They're not pinto beans. What are they? They're, they're the small navy beans. Oh, they're little white navy yeah, beans. Yeah. That's unusual. Yeah. And you know, means soaking and oh, yeah. overnight and. It's, you know, we, we've got some secret ingredients. No chocolate. It's very, very although good. Although I've heard chocolate and chili it's before. It's got, got a touch of sweetness to it. Uh, yeah. And it's That's not right. overly spicy, but it definitely hits you at the back of your throat. It's really, really you, good. You, you've, you've got a great palate and a great way to describe it. Yeah, it's the only <laughs> thing I'm good at. So you got to be good at something, right? All right, you're going to try our brown bread, which this is, is bread. also a signature. Okay. With Talk bran, to me about this bread. Bran, oats, and molasses. Somehow or other, we just stumbled upon that recipe. And it was really a, a, a wowing success. We, mm. we couldn't have done a better job on that one. I remember eating a bread like this in New England. I can't remember where, but same kind of structure. It's very, very good. Yeah, it's got, with the oats and bran, it gives molasses. you- Molasses. Yeah, yeah, and the molasses. 
And it's got to be grandma's molasses. Mm. Other molasses won't do. <laughs> we've, we've gone there. You're a molasses snob. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I like that. Yeah, we've gone Bob, the other way. Terrific product. I mean, it's just it, obviously 33 years. You're obviously doing something very right indeed. Well, hats off to you. Thank you very much. Ken. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Well, there you have it. 33 years of success, you can't argue with it. They're doing the same thing and they're doing it extremely well. Bob and Gail have got a good thing going here and they've had a good thing going for a long time and will continue to. You know, looking at all those soups has kind of got me inspired to make a wee drop of soup. So let's go to my kitchen and I'll show you how that's done. We saw some wonderful soups out there at the soup kitchen in Oak Ridge. I'm going to show you a terrific little soup, one of my favorites that I like to make here at home. This, believe it or not, is not the world's largest peanut. This is in fact a butternut squash. There's no real fancy way to do this. You don't want to try this with a peeler or anything like that. This outside husk is much, much too strong and difficult to do that. So once you get it down to here, you simply cut it into manageable dice and then across. Okay, we're going to start our soup with a basic mirepoix. That's just a fancy word for a few vegetables and aromatics to give it a bit of flavor. Like most soups, they all start the same way. We're going to start with some celery, onion, and carrot. So I've got a nice bit of celery right here. I'm gonna pop it into my pot, just like so. And I've also got a little onion, a wee bit of carrot, just like that. We'll wet it down with a touch of olive oil, just like that. I'm gonna bring it over to the stove. I'm gonna start it working. Come on. Okay, now, these are called aromatics for a very good reason. I'm already getting this fantastic aroma out of here. And all it is, is my basic root vegetables. Onion, celery, carrot. They're the base for almost any soup. What I'm going to do now is give these fellas a boost with a bit of seasoning. So, what I've got here, I throw in a couple of bay leaves. Uh, should we, we give them three? What the hell? It's a special occasion. We've got my bay leaves in there. All right. This is a touch of ground coriander. This is about a teaspoon, three quarters of a teaspoon. And it adds a terrific, very fragrant, spicy element. <clears throat> now to that, I'm going to add a touch of cayenne. And again, same thing going on here. You got about a quarter teaspoon. This stuff's like <laughs> quite incendiary. Okay, and then this is just, I've got about a tablespoon here of regular commercial curry powder. The beautiful yellow color comes from one of the spices that's in the blend called turmeric. And in it goes. So what's happening is our aromatic vegetables are now they're going to, because when we sweat them, they start to, to, to ooze their own beautiful flavors and liquid. Well, that liquid is now picking up all these dry spices. This is our base. And now to this, I'm going to bring it over here, back over to my work surface. And what I'm going to add now is I've got ginger, about half a tablespoon, and garlic. The two lads right there, ginger and garlic. Can't have one without the other in this recipe. And to this, I will then add my butternut squash. And in it goes. Okay, so now the last element we're going to add to this for now is going to be our liquid. In this case, chicken stock. If you were going to be a purist, you could add vegetable stock. I'm not a purist. Chicken stock. And I simply cover it. Like so. And I bring it back to the fire. Full blast. Bring it to a boil. And away she goes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit it with the finishing touch. Couple of little things. First thing, let's taste it. That'll tell us where we are. Okay, this soup has oodles of personality. So I'm going to take, it's got what I call sharp edges. 
So I'm going to take a couple of those edges off. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a little bit of honey. And by the way, maple syrup also works great for this. So either one, but I'm going to use honey today. And then my other little special ingredient is this stuff here. It's called coconut milk. It's actually coconut pulp and coconut water mixed together. But it's all natural. This, of course, is unsweetened, okay? And we're going to add a wee bit of this in here. I get me trusty blender back in there. And we're going to give it a last little swizz. <clears throat> now, when I checked the seasoning, I found the salt and pepper to be perfect. So no need to add any more or less. Everything is beautiful and ready to go. And you know what? I think we're ready to plate. This is a beautiful butternut squash bisque. Touch of curry. You're going to love it. I love it. My family loves this soup. Yours will too. Try it. Bon appetit. Fork in the Road with Chef Garrett is brought to you by... Visit historic Oak Ridge and discover America's secret city. Explore the great outdoors, experience majestic lakes, relive history, and treat yourself to an inspired meal. Historic Oak Ridge. For more information, oakridgevisitor.com. You can't get this at home. <laughs>